All right, I am going to talk about what self-paced learning looks like in my high school algebra one classroom. So um, we plan as a team at my school, so all of the algebra teachers work together to plan out and create our modern classrooms lessons. Um, we have a self-contained classroom, two inclusion classrooms, a general education classroom, and an honors classroom. And we all use um, a similar lesson calendar with different um, lesson classifications and different um, classrooms might have more or fewer must do lessons um, depending on the overall class pacing there will always be at least one aspire to do lesson for all students it's always a challenge lesson or kind of a big culminating lesson there's always a should do review activity for every unit and some kind of must do assessment sometimes that's a quiz sometimes that's a project um, in addition, within each lesson, we always plan and aspire to do an um, optional extension task. We use Canvas um, as a school, and we always use the same predictable lesson progression, which we regulate using the Canvas um, prerequisites and module requirements. Um, each module, students are required to work in sequential order, so they have to complete the video first with a four out of five at least to move to the practice. They get at least eight out of 10 on the practice and then they move to the mastery check. Um, and they have to get at least a 16 out of 20 to move on then to the next lesson. The extension, because it's optional, is not included in the requirements. Um, for the video and practice, we allow them unlimited attempts. For the mastery check, I um, allow them two attempts before they are required to complete um, a check-in revision with me. So collaboration is a big part of my classroom. Um, I encourage students to work together on all tasks except mastery checks. Um, students are allowed to move to different classroom or sorry, different tables within the classroom, of course, within reason. Um, I don't allow students to just be up and walking around the classroom, but they are allowed to, you know, move and then situate themselves to work with other students. Um, we have talked a lot about collaboration throughout the year, so we've talked about a rubric, what effective collaboration looks like. In our Unit 0 at the beginning of the year, we um, had some lessons that focused on collaboration skills. And then I encourage students to do a lot of self-reflection about whether they are being um, effective collaborators in the classroom. Um, in terms of motivation, I use a hustle point system. So these are school-wide values, honor, unity, self-advocacy, tenacity, leadership, and empathy. And I give students hustle points when they show these class values and they also nominate themselves and each other for hustle points at the end of each class. Um, cell phones have been a challenge at our school um, and throughout my teaching career. So with my students this year, I co-created a cell phone policy. Um, I talked to them about the benefits of different policies. They gave me their feedback. They decided that what they felt was reasonable and fair was that students who are behind pace keep their phones completely away. That's in a backpack or pocket, not on the desk, not out at all. And students who are on pace or ahead of pace are allowed to monitor their own cell phone use. Um, if I see a student who's ahead of pace or on pace, you know, on their cell phone for an extended period of time, I'll still give them some gentle encouragement to put it away and do something productive to encourage that uh, to make sure that they're challenging themselves and using their class time. But I'm much more diligent about students who are behind pace. And then we do class awards and celebrations um, every quarter, in addition to doing the daily hustle point celebrations. Um, I do daily check-ins and have a daily opening routine with my students. So while I'm taking attendance, um, I have them respond to a fun question. It could be, what are you planning to do this weekend? It could be something they're proud of or a goal they have. Um, favorites, favorite sport, favorite activity, favorite food. Um, or sometimes it's just a fun question for them to ponder, like, is a hot dog a sandwich? Why or why not? Um, and then when I am about to launch the self-paced um, portion of my lesson, I always um, go through announcements. This includes um, the on-pace lessons for the week, when I'll be available for office hours, and when they can get support from peers for tutoring. That's during lunch and advisory. 
um, any upcoming deadlines, any important information about um, grades that they need to know. And then I talk about um, their pacing. I show them this tracker, which I'll um, give a little bit more information about in a minute. Um, and then they are able to break into groups. Um, sometimes I assign them to partners, uh, especially if we're doing like test revisions. I might assign um, someone who got above an 80 to work with someone who got below an 80, but oftentimes I actually let them um, go and find their own partners and groups to work with. So once students are um, working independently, they um, can be working independently if they want or in small groups. Um, I will first go around to my highest priority check-ins. So those are going to be students who did not yet demonstrate mastery um, on a mastery check or students who maybe have fallen significantly behind, students who have been out for a while and just returned to the classroom. Um, when I do meet with students to talk about their revisions, we analyze their errors together. And then um, just on the fly, I might um, write a similar problem on their desk and have them quickly complete it in a whiteboard marker just to make sure that they understand that type of problem. And then if they demonstrate mastery in that informal way, then I'll go reopen the mastery check on Canvas for them to try again. Um, in terms of motivation, I did mention our hustle points. We also have a growth point system. So if students um, have negative behaviors or they don't um, exemplify the hustle values, I give them growth points and those impact their eligibility for school-wide incentives. Um, and my students this year have really enjoyed nominating both themselves and each other for these hustle points. Um, it's really great at the end of class to hear, you know, Mario say, Marcus showed great unity today, or to hear Caleb say um, Brian showed a lot of tenacity today, it shows that they're really internalizing the values of our classroom learning community. Um, we also discuss the norms a lot, and if there's ever an, um, a situation in which I notice that a lot of students aren't um, exemplifying a norm or a lot of students are struggling with the same um, kind of disposition, we'll have a classroom discussion about it. So for example, at um, one point in the year, I noticed students weren't really listening to the videos to the level I wanted. So we had a class discussion about what it means to really effectively um, use the videos for learning. And on Wednesdays, we actually don't do any self-pacing. We have shortened class periods, 45 minute classes. So we'll just do fun whole group activities and discussions. Often we do review games. Um, kids love this website, Look It. We'll do Nearpods or Pear Decks for interactive slideshows, or we might um, have them collaboratively work on park-style performance tasks or challenge problems. Um, I think it's nice to have this weekly um, day that kind of breaks up the general self-paced structure. So here's a little more detail on the progress tracker. This is auto-generated using the template from Modern Classrooms. So each day, um, at the beginning of the day, I will very quickly scan through my gradebook and update the pacing tracker. Um, I just look at the mastery checks, so I'll sort the grades by module and then by point value, highest to lowest, so I'll see all the mastery check grades together, and I'm able to really quickly see um, which lessons students have mastered. If they got above a 16 on a mastery check, it's mastered. If they got below a 16, they need to revise. And um, if it's not yet done and it's behind pace, it'll be a zero in the grade book. Um, when I enter that information into the spreadsheet, on this tab is automatically generated that shows the list of students who are behind pace, on pace, ahead of pace, and need to revise. I very quickly screenshot that, put that into my slide deck, and then I will update the list of students I have to check in with first. And also I will update the list of superstars. Um, and then right before students break to do their self-paced work, I'll remind them, go talk to these lesson superstars if you're struggling with one of the lessons. Um, I also use um, the pacing tracker to communicate with families. So I just share it out um, as a link and I remind them of the on pace lessons, upcoming deadlines. I have never had a, a family complain about having their student's name on this pacing tracker. Um, they kind of know that this is just a norm of our class and just because a student's on pace or sorry behind pace doesn't mean they're not going to get caught up. 
Um, I find that this really helps with learner accountability. So like I mentioned, I do encourage students to seek out peers for assistance on everything except the mastery checks. They know that the mastery checks are done independently, but um, I allow them to create their own groupings so they can see, for example, you know, Brian, Dale, and Darion can say, oh, we're all working on the same IXL task. Let's go sit together. Um, or Angel, Malcolm, and Ray are all working on lesson two, so they might choose to work together. Um, I do use soft zero grading, so as soon as something is past the suggested deadline, it goes in as a zero. I think it's really helpful for students to have this snapshot of their current grade based on what they have and have not submitted and mastered, um, because that allows them to take ownership of what they need to get done to improve their grade. And they also know that the end of the unit is a hard deadline, so like I mentioned earlier, um, in the upcoming dates on my daily announcement slides, I will always have the unit deadline and we just talk about it every day. I make the kids repeat it back to me. Um, it might sound like a broken record, but there should be no confusion about the point after which any missing work is a permanent zero. Um, and I do quite a few different forms of reflection in my class. Um, I think I've mentioned some of my daily reflection practices, but we also do um, interim end reset and reflection surveys. And at the end of every unit, I have students also fill out a reflection survey. Um, it's for them to reflect on their own progress, set goals for the following unit, and provide me with feedback. So here's an example of what that looked like for one unit in my class. They'll rate their mastery on each of the topics. They'll um, give feedback about how useful our different learning tools were. They'll provide me feedback, um, share any questions or comments, talk about how much they enjoyed the unit, um, and reflect on their strengths, um, accomplishments, ch and challenges from the unit, and then set a goal.